Hello, my name is Athena Panotopoulou. I am a PhD student at Dartmouth College and a visiting scholar at Boston University. This work is the outcome of collaboration with Ting Zhang, who was a postdoc at Boston University, Tammy Kyu, who was a student at Boston University, Sing Dong Yang, a faculty at Dartmouth College, and my advisor, Emily Whiting, a faculty at Boston University. I will present to you the paper, Tactile Line Drawings for Improved Shape Understanding in Blind and Visually Impaired Users, which has to do with tactile images that are felt on a piece of paper by hand and are used by people with blindness. They can be found in places like books, museums, and maps. Braille is a very well-known tactile alphabet, which is also very successful. In contrast, shapes are not as successfully represented with tactile images. So our work improves the design of uh, the images. In short, using uh, a 3D object as input, we output its tactile image and uh, test safe understanding from it. The input of the pipeline is an everyday 3D object. Its up vector and segmentation are given. A geometry analysis and processing pipeline places camera and generates cross sections to design a line drawing which we laser cut on paper and we print corresponding objects to test this drawing in terms of shape understanding. Just as a short note here, that the black area of the line drawing corresponds to the raised area of the tactile image. I will now present related work and background material, which often focuses on improving perceptibility of tactile images. Based on the findings of this work, many guidelines have been made. They contain a lot of rules and cannot be universally applied. One such document is published by the Braille Authority of North America Urbana, which we use to design the baseline images for our study. I will illustrate three key elements of these guidelines using uh, this figure as an example. On the left, you see the original image, while on the right, the corresponding tactile image. First, Bana suggests the use of semantic indicative texture meaning that the sepals have one texture, while the petals have a different one. Second, Bana suggests modifications to improve perceptibility. Such modifications can be the addition of white space around lines or the enlargement of the ovary. We make use of white space boundaries as a post-processing step for the design of our images. Next, Bana suggests the use of canonical viewpoints. Here, the original image is taken from an accidental cross view, meaning that the eye level is a little above the object level in this case, while the tactile image is taken from a canonical viewpoint, meaning that the eye level is at the same level as the object. The reason that I explain viewpoint selection is because it's a very important attribute for illustration in general and particular for the design of our images. Bana suggests the use of one or multiple images taken from canonical viewpoints. In contrast to that, we render one, view, one image taken from multiple canonical viewpoints that are rendered from orthographic cameras. The way we design the image is uh, following an approach similar to Agraval et al. In their work, one master camera helps combine the multiple views into one. In technical terms, this step is called compositing. Other ways uh, to design images with large angle of view include the use of flexible viewing volumes, cross slit cameras, or triangular cameras, but these make uh, the objects appear distorted. Non-photorealistic rendering approaches, in addition to using multiple projections to display objects clearly, they also use lines, improve the lines using skeleton information, or use hatching to indicate curvature. We make use of all of these elements, but in contrast to earlier work, our images are tactile. The two non-photorealistic rendering approaches for the design of tactile images was the inspiration of our work. The first introduced the idea of curvature indicative texture. Just recall that Bana recommends the use of semantic indicative texture. And the second work, flattens the object before its display. Closing the background material, I want to clarify that we propose a new semi-automatic pipeline for the design of tactile images, 
made of laser cut microcapsule paper and that study that tests shape understanding from these images. Before I explain the algorithm to design the images, I will explain why we decided to use this algorithm. Our decision is largely based on two formative studies we ran. We the first tried to understand how the blind perceive shapes. For that purpose, we used five objects and gave clay to two participants and asked them to replicate the objects. Some information seemed more important for them. One such key element is that uh, objects are made of distinct pieces that are connected following the skeleton. For example, all chairs have four legs and four connectors between them. Second, there is a distinction between flat and curved surfaces. For example, the flat surface of the seat of the chair versus the curved container of the coffee cup. And third, participants were able to recognize cross-sections and in simpler cases also managed to replicate them. Such an example is the pyramid, which had a square cross-section and both artifacts that participants made were, were, had also square cross-sections. Now that we identified the key shape information, we ran a second study, this time to see how well current images convey this key information. We 3D printed objects different from a previous study and we gave three variations of illustrations to seven participants. The first type of illustration was taken from non-canonical or three-quarter views. The second was taken from canonical views, meaning front, top or side view of the object. And the third type of illustration contained also texture. The participants were asked to identify key shape information, such as how many pieces has the back of the chair. From this, we were able to identify what changes need to be made to improve the illustration of shapes. One observation is that participants found hard to use more than one images. One of them suggested to combine the two views of the eyeglasses into one. Also, it was easier for participants to interpret canonical viewpoints, but not all canonical viewpoints, rather than canonical viewpoints that result in large surface area. For example, for the rocking horse, the side view is preferable compared to the top view. Also, also participants perceive occlusions as mistake. For example, one of the participants mentioned for the chair, I really wish this chair has four legs, even though only two are shown here. Finally, surface curvature is not illustrated accurately and careful line placement could improve upon it. For example, the main container of the teapot seemed more spherical in the non-canonical rather than the canonical viewpoint. Based on these findings, we design illustrations different than before. The image now is a multi-projection line drawing, and the main steps to design it is camera placement, compositing, and generation of texture. The first step is the placement of the master camera that, if you recall, helps combine the multiple views into one. For that reason, we select the master camera so that it displays all parts clearly. In this case, the parts are the main container, the handle, and the spout. Here you see examples of different master camera placements and we select the master camera viewpoint by testing multiple attributes from the work of Secor et al. One such attribute results in the view that you see here, which is not acceptable, of course, because the handle is not visible. While the view we select based on the silhouette length shows clearly all parts, not only for the jack, but for a set of objects that we tested. The next uh, step guides the placement of the part cameras. Each uh, part camera renders a single part. We have six parts, we use six part cameras here. And for simplicity, I will just focus on the spout camera. And from the study, we found that uh, canonical viewpoints of large surface area are preferable. So we compute the canonical frame using PCA. And here you see the corresponding bounding box. And then we select one of the viewpoints here is indicated with the black arrow. Our selection is based on the skeleton we extract for that part. 
as well as the surface area of the box sides. We repeat the same process for all parts, and here you see the corresponding views that uh, they show clearly the shape of the parts. Naturally, the next step of the algorithm is to compute the up vector of the parts. By up vector, I mean these arrows on top of the parts. However, I'm going to skip this step for now and move into the compositing step, which rearranges the part camera views to combine them together into one image. We use the connection points between parts and we make the connection points coincide on the part cameras. To do so, we define a graph over all parts with edges denoting connectivity and we traverse the graph and this is the result of this traversal. And now that we made clear how we use the part camera views, let's see how we could compute the, the up vectors for this table. Let's assume that the parts are displayed are shown here, the tabletop and the legs. If we composite the image as is here, we will get one table that appears to have two long instead of four separate regular legs, as shown on the middle. If you recall, the master camera view was selected to show all, par all parts clearly. So we make use of the part camera view and we update all the part cameras. In this particular case, the only camera that gets updated is the tabletop camera. That's why I focus on the tabletop here. So we make the tabletop view be aligned with the master camera view. And by that, I mean that we make the connection points coincide on the horizontal axis. This we can achieve with the rotation around the central point, similar to the one that you see here. This aligns the view of the tabletop to the view of the master camera, which gives us the image on the right, in which all of the parts are shown clearly. Next, we generate the textures. If you recall from the study, curvature could be indicated with lines. So we create a new curvature indicative line texture. We input the parts, the skeleton, and the cameras, and we extract uniformly sampled cross-sections, and this is how the cross-sections appear on the part cameras. As you notice, the original shape has both a curved back and a curved seat, while the cross-sections appear as straight lines for all parts. In order to convey correctly curvature information, we align the cross-sections with the part camera views. This alignment can, we can achieve with uh, rotating the cross-section similar to the one that you, that you see here. We next layer the cross-sections and this result in the texture here, which uh, shows accurately the shape geometry of the parts both of the seat and the back. We next pro post-process the textures following BANA guidelines to make them more easily perceptible. And this results in the final renderings that you see here. We ran a study involving 20 participants with blindness. We chose common, common household objects and uh, we used three object variations. The shape variations are indicated with a green color. For example, the first chair has no pillow on the seat, while the second has a pillow on the seat. Here, the second has a curved back, while the third has a flat back. We then 3D print the object, and we laser cut the illustration, both following our approach and BANA guidelines. The BANA guidelines are used as baseline images for the comparative study we run in which we give uh, participants one object that they are at the time, the three 3D prints and one type of image. Participants fill each object and then select which of the object is depicted in the image. This image is the new design, and we repeat the same question for all objects. And then we ask the same questions, but following the other type of design, in this case, the banner guidelines. For the other half of the participants, the, the order that they were asked the questions was reversed. 
Yeah, an answer was considered uh, correct when the participant chose the object that matched the illustration. Now we'll present briefly the results of the user study. The participants appreciated the use of a single rather than two images. Also, the new type of uh, textures allowed them to feel more clearly the shape of the objects. Here, the brown indicates success rates with the standard guidelines and the green with the new design. The success uh, rate of um, the new design that is the correctly answered over the total number of questions over all participants has doubled. Now let's look at each object individually. At the left, you see the three object variations. Here, the modification changes the shape of the base. The target uh, object will always be the middle one. So here is the V-shaped monitor, and at the top you see how this can be depicted with a new design, and at the bottom with the banner guidelines. So the use of one rather than two images made it easier to identify the shape of this monitor. The second key result is the display of curvature, which is very prominent in this uh, set of uh, chairs for which the target shape has both curved back and seat. And as you see, the success rate is much higher with the new design. For this table example, we vary the object by changing the number of legs and the shape of the legs. One observation is that in our illustration, one of the legs is fully contained within the tabletop. And this led some participants to mistakenly think that it is a three-leg table. The headphones was the one result that had higher success rates with the standard guidelines, and the reasons were two. The earpieces appear to be of different shape, and the headpiece appear to be of a single piece. To summarize, I presented an algorithm for the design of tactile images which included a novel approach for the rendering of multi-projection line drawings, information relevant to geometry, curvature, and viewpoint preference was extracted using image and geometry processing, and the user study for the testing of the images in terms of shape understanding was described. The user study was made possible with the use of fast prototyping tools, and the promising results give us leads to create more accessible images for people with blindness. Despite the advantages of this new design, several changes can be made for their improvement. Perceptual limitations are caused by part of a lapse on the image. We saw this in the user study in the headphone uh, that, uh, in which uh, the headpiece appeared to be of a single piece and uh, in the fully contained leg within the tabletop. Also, our pipeline could improve in terms of accessibility by becoming fully automatic. Some steps needed manual intervention, similar to this example here, in which uh, we required to manually correct the ordering of the legs in order to make the fourth leg appear. Also, by creating an accessible tool, not only for novice users, but also for the blind, we could allow them to design all their own images and 3D objects. I want to acknowledge funding sources, organizations, and people that made this work possible. Finally, speaking not only on my behalf, but also on behalf of my co-authors, thank you for listening.